Today we are reading the tale of two bad mice. There they are. They look cute, but they are not innocent. I know this story. Once upon a time, there was a very beautiful doll's house. It was red brick with white windows, and it had real muslin curtains and a front door and a chimney. It belonged to two dolls called Lucinda and Jane. At least it belonged to Lucinda, but she never ordered meals. Jane was the cook, but she never did any cooking because the dinner had been bought ready-made in a box full of shavings. Here's the dollhouse. There's Lucinda on the top and Jane on the bottom. Here they are inside their house. There were two red lobsters and a ham. They're talking about the food that came already made. There were two red lobsters and a ham, a fish, a pudding, and some pears and oranges. They would not come off the plates, but they were extremely beautiful. One morning, Lucinda and Jane had gone out for a drive in the doll's buggy. There was no one in the nursery, and it was very quiet. Presently, there was a little scuffling, scratching noise in a corner near the fireplace where there was a hole under the skirting board. Tom Thumb put, his, put out his head for a moment and then popped it in again. Tom Thumb was a mouse. A minute afterwards, Hunkamunka, his wife, isn't that a funny name for a wife, Hunkamunka, put her head out too and when she saw that there was no one in the nursery, she ventured out on the oilcloth under the coal box. There's the beautiful play food. And there's the mice peeking out to see if it's safe. And now they're going to come out and check out everything that's around. The doll's house stood at the other side of the fireplace. Om Thumb and Hunkamunka went cautiously across the rug. They pushed the front door. It was not locked. Om Thumb and Hunkamunka went upstairs and peeped into the dining room. Then they squeaked with joy. Such a lovely dinner was laid out upon the table. There were spoons and knives and forks and two dolly chairs, all so convenient. So they're kind of peeking in and then they see the room, the dining room set up with all that beautiful play food. Mom Thumb set to work at once to carve the ham. It was a beautiful shiny yellow streaked with red, but the knife crumpled up and hurt him. He put his finger in his mouth. It is not boiled enough. It is hard. You have to try, Hunkamunka. Hunkamunka stood up in her chair and chopped at the ham with another knife. It's as hard as the hams at the cheesemongers, said Hunkamunka. The ham broke off the plate with a jerk and rolled under the table. Leave it alone, said Tom Thumb. Give me some fish, Hunkamunka. They haven't figured out yet that this is not real food does look beautiful and they're very excited to eat it. There's the ham falling on the floor. Unka Munka tried every spoon in turn, but the fish was glued to the dish. Then Tom Thumb lost his temper. He put the ham in the middle of the floor and hit it with the tongs and with the shovel. Bang, bang, smash, smash. The ham flew all into pieces, for underneath the shiny paint, it was made of nothing but plaster. Then there was no end to the rage and disappointment of Tom Thumb and Hunkamunka. They broke up the pudding, the lobsters, the pears, and the oranges. As the fish would not come off the plate, they put it into the red-hot, crinkly paper fire in the kitchen. But it would not burn either. That's because the fire isn't real. It's a dollhouse. We just can't get it. 
Here they are smashing the ham. And there's that fish on the plate that won't fall off. And here they are trying to put it in a fire that isn't real. They are silly little mice. And they're hungry and disappointed. Tom Thumb went up the kitchen chimney and looked out the top. There was no soot. While Tom Thumb was up the chimney, Hunkamunka had another disappointment. He found some tiny canisters upon the dresser labeled rice, coffee, sugar. But when she turned them upside down, there was nothing inside except red and blue beads. There's Tom Thumb looking out the chimney. There's Hunkamunka trying to find sugar. And it's just toys still, just little beads. Then those mice set to work to do all the mischief they could, especially Tom Thumb. He took Jane's clothes out of the chest of drawers in her bedroom and he threw them out of the top floor window. But Hunkamunka had a frugal mind. After pulling half the feathers out of Lucinda's pillow, she remembered that she herself was in want of a feather bed. With Tom Thumb's assistant, she carried the pillow downstairs and across the rug. It was difficult to squeeze the pillow into the mouse hole, but they managed it somehow. Then Hunkamunka went back and fetched a chair, a bookcase, a bird cage, and several small odds and ends. The bookcase and the bird cage refused to go into the mouse hole. There she is ripping up the feather pillow and suddenly she realizes that would make a very good little mattress for herself. And there they are trying to make the bird cage fit, but it won't. Hunka Munka left them beside the coal box and went to fetch a cradle. Hunka Munka was just returning with another chair when suddenly there was a noise of talking outside upon the landing. The mice rushed back to their hole and the dolls came into the nursery. Oh, what a sight met the eyes of Jane and Lucinda. Lucinda sat upon the upset kitchen stove and stared, and Jane leaned against the kitchen dresser and smiled, but neither of them made any remark. There they are, pushing the little cradle. There they are grabbing a few extra things. And here's Jane and Lucinda coming back to see the mess. The bookcase and the birdcage were rescued from under the coal box, but Hunkamunka has got the cradle and some of Lucinda's clothes. She also has some useful pots and pans and several other things. The little girl that the doll's house belonged to said, I will get a doll dressed like a policeman. She thinks maybe that will scare off the burglars. So there's Hunkamunka with the cradle, and look, she's got a little baby mouse. And there she is with the pots and pans. And there's the policeman doll. But the nurse said, the nurse is kind of like the nanny, I will set a mouse trap. That is the story of the two bad mice, but they were not so very naughty after because Tom Thumb paid for everything he broke. He found a crooked coin under the rug and upon Christmas Eve, he and Hunkamunka stuffed it into one of the stockings of Lucinda and Jane. Mice can't use money. I thought maybe they could use it to pay for the new stuff that they stole. And very early every morning, before anybody is awake, Hunkamunka comes in with her dustpan and her broom to sweep the dolly's house. So now there are lots of little mice babies. And there they are putting the coin in the Christmas stocking, and there's Hunkamunka coming help tidy up every day to make up for all the mess that she made. The end.